All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, I've got some things to talk about uh, regarding the bankroll challenge. So um, I will recommend that you check out the timestamps below if you don't want to hear me talk. If you want to check out the gameplay, I'm going to have some gameplay analyzing some hands at the end of this video. But if you want to see the, <laughs> the life and times of someone trying to make money on po in poker and failing to do so, uh, you can keep watching and try to learn from my mistakes. And um, yeah, so here we go. So first of all, I'm going to be talking about um, how bad <laughs> November has gone for me. Uh, last last month um, in October, things went very well. We like, you know, doubled our bankroll and like things were going great, running fine. Um, not running like super hot, but you know, not running really bad or anything and playing well so uh, we did really well in October but um, when November came around we immediately went down like $600 in um, a matter of like one or two weeks um, I guess I can show you the, the actual graph really quickly so um, get that stupid guy out of the way so um, what we're looking at is the month of November and we are currently down $95.95. Although that's not actually right because um, there's like $50 that weren't registered on one of my sessions. So I'm, I'm down like 50 bucks. Um, maybe even less than that because there that happened twice. But I know for sure that it's missing like a $50 win. But um, basically, um, this was the beginning of our month. Uh, just losing session after session. I don't remember like specific hands or anything, uh, but I can tell you that, um, you know, we were down as much as 553, I wanna say that's the lowest. Um, then we got all the way back up to plus almost 500. Now we're down again, <laughs> cause yesterday was really bad. So I just wanted to show you this graph really quick. So um, basically the, the story is, it's just running really bad. Um, you know, kings into aces, ace king into kings, ace king into aces, like so many times, always against aggressive players, flopping top pair, top kicker versus like top set, you know, ace king into kings. Like I've done that like three times, like this week alone. Um, so things have just like, I've just been running really bad. Um, definitely not playing my best. So like I still, you know, obviously, I could still book a win because if I'm about even, then that means I just have to play a little bit better to book a win for the month. So I'm um, certainly not playing my best by any means, but um, uh, I've just been running really bad in November. And I wanted to show you guys this. This is my old microphone that I've recorded all my videos with. Um, there's kind of a glare there, but like I literally like picked this up and threw it against the wall because I was so tired of running bad. And it's like, it's all it's all broken inside so i had to buy a new mic which is like actually pretty annoying it's like you're losing money and then you have to spend more money because you break stuff it's a pretty bad cycle also this is like a little bit embarrassing but you know just to be like totally transparent with you guys you can see that little hole in the wall it's from literally like taking my phone and like throwing it at the wall because i just like couldn't handle running as bad as i was but also not playing that well just being on mega tilt so I guess I'm just showing you that to show that like, even though I try to give like poker improvement tips, I'm, I'm very far from perfect. Um, I have these like horrible uh, character mess ups or slip ups, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's just where I'm not my best self. And, um, you know, I'm not perfect, but I, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking clearly, I'm a pretty good poker player, but, um, you know, I just wanted to show you guys, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm capable of doing these like really stupid things too. So anyway, um, let's see, what's the next next topic? So the next topic is what happened yesterday, which was really bad. Um, as you may have seen in my graph, I was I was about plus 250 plus 300 yesterday. And then um, at the end of yesterday, I ended up down 100. So that was like a minus... Um, what is that? Minus $350 swing. And that was because I decided to take a shot at 100 and L after taking a break um, from poker to deal with some personal things. Like I got in a car crash. I had to like 
um, go take care of that, um, get a bike. And I was just like, I don't know, some, I, I just had to take care of a lot of personal things. And um, I just wasn't playing much poker, but I, I came back feeling like pretty decent, like mentality wise. So I was like, well, you know, I've got, I've got a 2,300 or so dollar bankroll. Um, that's 23 buy-ins at hundred and L. I'm going to start taking shots um, because I was feeling pretty good. Uh, but I also had like a little bit of an ego to me thinking that like, oh, I'm going to just crush these guys, which is just like confidence is good, but overconfidence when it's not um, with good reason is just kind of stupid. And that's what I did. So I went in there thinking I was going to go beat 100 and L. And also because the stakes were so high, you know, 100 and L, you're starting to play for some real money. And um so I would, I ran bad and then I also like played bad, got on tilt and also my ego got involved again. Um, so I was playing for big stakes, playing really bad. And, um, you know, I was just, I was also rusty too, because like I said, I, I wasn't really playing poker, um, for like a week or week or two, about a week and a half. Uh, I was just taking time off and, um, then you come back and play tougher opponents and um, all these things combined led to me having a three hundred dollar downswing yesterday, which was you know that's that's like over twenty percent of my bankroll, which was like you know it hurts, definitely sucks. So um, that's what happened yesterday. And so what I'm doing now is I'm I'm back to um, ten and L Zoom uh, because that's well it's actually Blitz on ACR, but that's where like that's where I got really, you know, like way better at pokers by like slowing things down, just playing two tables of zoom or blitz and just um, thinking through all my decisions and like really trying to be present and not um, on tilt or anything. And so that's what the plan is right now is I'm gonna get really good at um, blitz again, six max, and um, probably start playing the six max uh, blitz uh, for 15 L soon, but I'm gonna, spend at least today, maybe, maybe tomorrow and the next day or something getting really good at the blitz games because, um, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, poker is poker. Like, yeah, you're going to, as you move up, you're going to play better players. Um, but you can get really like pretty darn good just by playing low stakes and making sure you're like playing really good in all of these spots. And, um, that's kind of what I'm doing. So it's like, it's, it's like really cheap practice and really good practice to just play against these other guys because, um, I don't know, 10 and L blitz isn't, isn't like significantly easier than 50 and L in my opinion. So, um, the plan is just to get really good at uh, 10 and L blitz again. And then I'm just going to start playing, um, the next stake up. So, um, that kind of concludes that little segment. Um, now I'm going to talk about, um, what I've been doing the last, you know, basically like 12 hours, 24 hours, um, not 24 because I lost like last night. So we'll just say 12 hours. Um, I've just been kind of reflecting on like, um, my mindset and saying, well, how did I, how did I lose so much money yesterday? Uh, what happened and who, who is someone that I can kind of like try to take advice from and for me, that person is Charlie Carroll. So I, I've made a video in the past where I talked about who I kind of look up to for poker advice. Um, and that was, you know, that was an, a genuine video at the time. But these days, um, I look up more toward to um, Charlie Carroll. Um, I think there are people, I think we all have like different personalities. I think there are people who might play poker in a certain way that's like very GTO and mathematic, mathematical math based. Um, but when I, when I play my best poker, um, I, all I can say is that I, I really relate to Charlie Carroll and the way that he talks about and thinks about poker. And when I'm playing my best, I think, um, you know, not on his level, but you know, that's kind of what I aspire to be. And so what I've been doing is just kind of watching his gameplays, um, and saying like, well, where's my thought process different from his? Why is mine so bad lately? And um, so that that's what I've been doing. Um, and you know, maybe that's what um, I am for you guys. So you know, 
Um, I guess if you're losing and you're not happy with how you're playing, um, it's okay to take some time off and um, just study and think about study people who are doing what you want to do and think about what you're doing and take it really slow. And then this is kind of like a quote thing, just a kind of like something I realized that I was doing and um, something I would recommend you guys think about. So what um, I've done in the past is that you, you play through the pain of losing and um, that's kind of what you're doing um, when you're playing on tilt is that you're not present to the moment. You're, you're, you've, you've got this emotional baggage, even if it's only from, you know, two minutes ago, you're no longer playing the hand as well as you can, because you're seeing it through the lens of the, the pain or the anger of the last hand that you just lost, or, you know, yesterday, oh, I can't believe I lost $300 yesterday. So it's like, you're playing different than your best poker game. So, um, what I realized is you kind of have to let go of that pain and realize that today is a new day. And um, your bankroll is where it is now, and it's it's all up from here, <laughs> as Doctor Disrespect would say. It's like we're on the the mountain of success. I don't know what the heck he says, but <laughs> we're only going up. Um, but um, yeah, you know w- what I realized is I I think we all probably do this, and this is why I'm telling you guys is that it's really easy to just think about what we have lost, and let it completely cloud our judgment. But in order to, um, you know, move forward in life and in poker, you have to be able to let, you know, learn from what you did and just completely let go of it and um, put your best foot forward once again. So um, the last thing about mindset that I'll talk about is um, sometimes you're just going to lose. So like sometimes you're going to run Kings into aces, like, you know, three times in a day that actually happened to me, um, at the beginning of November, I'm, I'm remembering it now. And this is why, you know, I got so tilted is like, I had my aces cracked by Kings three times in like five minutes for, you know, $50 each 50 plus dollars each. And that, that was really, really difficult. Um, you know, like I said, I try to be, you know, a perfect, person and try to not let those things affect me but it it certain certainly does and then to like try to grind it up the next day is just it's just really hard and um i'm not kidding it was like on one table i had aces cracked by kings (laughs) and then literally within 30 seconds on a different table the exact same thing happened and then like 10 minutes later it happened again so you know it's um you know poker can be very brutal so i guess all i'm saying is um uh, you know, this is the advice I gave in my like no no tilt video. Um, you just have to focus on playing good poker, and you know, being present to the moment and playing good poker, and not playing through the pain. You know, you have to pay. Pl- uh, you know, just play. Uh, play good poker. That, that's 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 what makes you money at the end of the day, even if you lose on a day to day basis. Okay, so lastly. Um, Well, not lastly, um, second to last, um, I'll just talk about my current bankroll, which is $2,070.80, which really hurts because we were just under 2,500. And I was, I was already, I already had that, like the thumbnail in my head about like halfway there to the 5k challenge. But, um, we did indeed, uh, run very bad in November plus play bad, run bad yesterday. So, um, given all of that, we're down to 2,070 and, um, we do still have redeemable combat points, which is, if you're not familiar, the rake back system on America's card room. So I have about $300 in that. So you could say we're at 2,370, but you know, just for the sake of it, um, we're just going to say we're at $2,070. So, um, that is everything. That is all the updates for November. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to be probably releasing this, um, either today or tomorrow. Today's Thanksgiving. So, um, either today or tomorrow, um, you guys will be seeing this video, but happy Thanksgiving. If you celebrate that, um, happy weekend. If you don't, I guess, I don't, I don't know who celebrates Thanksgiving and who does that. I don't know if it's like a, a cultural American thing. I don't know what it is, but, um, I'm going to talk about some hands that I played today. 
And um, despite all the like um, downplaying of my, um, you know, poker skills in in this last twenty minutes or fifteen minutes, um, the the hands I played today were pretty good. And um, if you watch them, you will certainly learn some stuff from it. So uh, check them out. And uh, thanks, you guys, for watching and supporting. Um, people are still subscribing and commenting. Um, so I appreciate that. And um, I hope everyone is running good. So enjoy this gameplay. All right. So we are looking at um, a7 offsuit open on the button, which is a totally fine open, in my opinion, uh, especially against this player type who is mostly tight passive i guess he's more tight aggressive um i think i actually might change that i might have changed his tag because in in my uh system blue equals tight passive but we can see he has a six aggression factor which means he's probably um willing to like check raise a lot and i think i um i might actually change that during the hand but uh regardless we open a seven get called and um basically uh, i think we see bet on the slightly smaller side. So we do see that on the slightly smaller side. We're basically just trying to fold out things like queen jack, king queen, ace x, and also getting value from things like uh, deuce x, 7x, um, 8 9, uh, 7 8. You know, tons of hands we can get value from. Um, you can see me actually looking at his uh, aggression factor after I make that bet because I'm like, wait a second, this guy might check raise me, which I believe he does. So he does end up check raising, which um, now that we're look, yeah, we start looking at his stats and say, wait a second, this guy is actually capable of um, of uh, actually making some plays. So we turn we turn him to yellow, which means tight uh, aggressive, which is a much more fitting tag. So then we're looking at the turn, uh, we see the 10, which um, in my mind is actually a fairly safe card um, by another 10 showing up. Of course he has um, less of a chance of having a 10 because there's only two left. Um, but it also seems like it's a good card for him to barrel all of his draws. So if he had something like um, Queen Jack of Spades, any you know any spade draw, um, eight nine of diamonds, uh, these kinds of hands that would check raise a small bet on the flop, um, then they're going to continue on the turn. So I, I don't really feel too uncomfortable calling a turn bet. Uh, but he does check. Um, I thought he bet, but he checks. So when he checks, um, I think he's betting all of his tens. Like there's no reason for someone who has trips to check here. And for that reason, I decide that, you know what, my seven is probably good. Um, I'm going to go for some value. And I'm also doing a sizing that's a little bit, um, say, it kind of says, you know, I might have a full house right here. Um, when you make these kind of like smaller bets, it first of all allows um, weak hands to call. But it also shows a lot of strength, in my opinion, because if I have ace 10 here, I'm trying to keep someone in. If I have deuces full, I'm trying to keep someone in. So um, I'm going to be making these small bets, but again, it allows weak hands to call. So um, I quite like this sizing. And like I said, I think he, I think he has a lot of these, um, these kind of like queen jack of spades hands, queen jack, queen jack of diamonds, eight nine things like that. And I'm just trying to get value from those hands. Um, and then, uh, you know, for sure, by the by the river, um, I don't think he's checking a 10. And I think it's actually, you know, I put him on exactly what he had, which was like a week seven, like a seven, eight, and um, a nine, seven, something like this. Um, so what I'm really just trying to do is just like continue to get value from these hands, give him really good odds, um, especially with the king um, that hits my range. And also I could have a 10 as well. My range is very strong, his is very weak, so that's why I'm making these very tiny bets, just trying to get called, trying to get value. And um, like I said, I just thought he had something like, you know, seven, eight. That seems just like a very likely hand. And I just think my seven is good, so I'm just going for value here. <clears throat> and also, um, he might be more inclined to call now that he has, um, if he does have a seven, he has a seven, sevens and tens with a king, so it's like, it's more likely that he's actually just like chopping if he's um, 
if he's not behind. And I'm also giving him a chance to spaz out and try to bluff us. I, I just don't believe that he has anything at this point. So I'm really just going for value and I'm prepared to call a check raise. And um, it turns out we, oh, I thought he had seven, eight, but he had six, seven of spades, which is like right on the money, exactly what we thought. And we got, um, you know, this is a 43 big blind pot with, um, you know, a third pair. So um, yeah, that's why I wanted to show this hand. You know, this is how, to, how I got like very, very, very good value out of this hand. And I don't think hardly anyone is ever gonna get this this kind of value. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like, <laughs> to my own horners or anything. That's not the point. The point is, is like, I think this hand was pretty close to perfectly played. And um, that's why I wanted to show it is all. So now we're gonna be looking at the next hand, which is um, ace five, which I, so this is an aggressive player. Um, he attempts to steal a lot. He he barrels a decent amount. Um, I'm just looking at his stats. So attempt to steal is 45, barrels a decent amount, um, three bets a lot at least at these stakes and he raises a lot of hands so we are prepared to go to battle with our ace five offsuit so um when he raises um it, it seems like he's just going to continue pretty much every hand here <clears throat> especially any hands that connect with the flop so I, I found it strange that he was um he didn't continue here so um, I actually don't remember what I did. I just remember that I played the hand well. So by checking back here, we can represent something like Queen Jack. Um, we can we can have pretty much any hand. We could even have pocket fours that just hit. We could even have uh, a set of deuces. Um, it's a little unlikely. I think we, that hand's probably betting, but we could easily have pocket fours. We could have um, just a random like queen four. We could have um, Queen Jack. Um, that's a strong candidate in our range. Um, but more importantly, um, I'm, I'm thinking more about like what he does not have. I think he's betting all of his pairs here. I think he's betting queen jack on the flop. He's betting all of his kings. He's betting king jack for sure. King 10, ace king, aces. He's betting all of these hands. So when he checks the flop, I think it's just really, really weak. And then when he bets the turn, um, so we have a gut shot. And we have a decently strong range. We have queens in our range. Um, again, we have sets of fours. We even have deuce four. Um, we have, uh, I think we just have a much stronger range here. And um, I just think it's so suspicious that he's betting so small on the turn um, that I, I think he has something like sevens or something here. And then we're gonna see him bet on the river. Now this this river bet makes absolutely no sense. Um, oh, another hand we have in our range is ace 10 and nine ten. So basically when he bets big on the river, he's saying he has like two pair or better pretty much. Yeah, he's saying he has at least queen jack, which I just don't think is in his range. Like I just don't think queen jack is checking the flop. Um, but other than that, there's just like, no hands that take this line. It actually absolutely makes no sense. Maybe no, I don't think he, I don't think pocket fours is even like check checking the flop with the intention to call. So I think he just has absolutely like no value hands in his range that can represent a three quarters pot or whatever this is pot bet on the river. So obviously we have ace high. Um, we're not going to call if we have something like king ten. We can just call. But obviously we can't call with ace high. So um, in my mind, his range is just non-existent. Like he has like no value hands except for queen jack. Queen jack is like maybe the only hand I give him credit for. And I say, in my mind, I'm saying, well, if he does have queen jack, then we're just going to bluff into queen jack and get called. But the rest of his hands make absolutely no sense. So And we have plenty of like pocket fours in our range. Again, we, have, we even have ace 10, 9, 10. King Jack, we have like a lot of strong hands in our range. Um, so for that reason, um, I am going to raise, I don't know what I'm doing all this clicking about. I think I'm just kind of trying to process what's going on. Um, also, another thing to consider, this is just an aggressive player. 
Um, if if a nit makes it, makes this bet, I don't think we're really making making this raise. But um, everything I said uh, leads me to believe that this is a good idea. So we make um, approximately a two x pot raise. Just saying, you know what? Like the only hand in his value range is Queen Jack, and I think he's just full of it the rest of the time. I think he's just bluffing uh, with like pocket sevens or something here. And I just don't think he can call this bet. And um, well, since I'm showing the video, you can assume that I get the fold through. So I think this is just another another example of a hand well played um, with like clear thought process. Um, and uh, I, th I think the handle is just very well played. <clears throat> so next we're gonna be looking at this ace 10 suited under the gun raise. Um, this guy has been three betting us a few times, so we aren't um, fully convinced that we just need to like fold or something. We're also getting a decent price. It's not even not even 3x. Um, oh wait, it is. Uh, it's right about 3x, I guess. Which isn't like a bad price. We're fairly deep, over 100 big blinds. And, um, you know, we have ace-10 suited. And um, so we're going to make the call. Flop is pretty darn good. Top pair, top kicker. Um, no reason to do anything other than check. Um, at this point, I'm thinking we definitely have pocket 10s in our range, pocket jacks. Um, and, like, pocket 9s. And in his range, I'm thinking, you know, ace-king, ace-queen. Um... Aces, kings, queens, jacks. So that's pretty, like I give him a strong range. It's not like he three bets a ton. But when he checks the flop, I think it's just very, very weak. Um, I honestly don't like his play whatsoever. I guess he's just worried that I have exactly, you know, pocket tens or something. Uh, or pocket jacks and he just thinks I'm not gonna fold the flop. So anyway, like I just decide that this, this check back is just so darn weak. I. I think we're just never behind here. He also has things like pocket nines and pocket eights in his range that we can get value from. Pocket sevens as well. Um, that seems a little less likely. Um, I think he's probably just flatting, you know, pocket sevens. So I think it's really likely he has something like eights, nines, ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, king. And so at this point, um, I'm targeting all of those hands and trying to get called with a, um, you know, slightly under pot or half pot value bet. Um, I think this is, this is some, this is the sizing that again, these ace high hands can call, um, pocket eights, pocket nines, definitely never folding here. Um, and the only hand we're really worried about is pocket sevens. So he just calls and, um, the river's pretty darn good because I just think ace jack is not in his range that much. Um, jack 10, definitely not pocket jacks, definitely not eight, nine doesn't seem like it i think he's gonna bet eight nine on the flop um as a c bet so i think at this point he's really just trying to get to showdown with something like pocket eights pocket nines ace king and ace queen and so for that reason um i'm just gonna go for more value um <clears throat> at these stakes people don't really like raise um weak value bets um and you know some people do but i just didn't think that he was the type of player to do this frankly so um, I'm just doing another tiny uh, value bet on the river. And um, again, I'm just targeting pocket eights, pocket nines, ace, king, ace, queen. Um, yeah, those are those are the exact hands I'm targeting. So I, I want to make a sizing that those hands can call. Um, you know, if you go too big, um, you're just not going to get called. I'd rather just get the value. I'm not going for max value or something uh, by like, betting pot or something. I'm just trying to get called. Um, so as we saw, I got called, but um, it, was a, it was a quick little transition there, but um, that hand worked out pretty darn well. So next we're looking at ace two suited on the button. Um, we can three bet this, um, but I believe I looked at um, the players on my left here and I saw, you know, none of them really three bet too much. And I'd like to just take a, a flop in position against this guy. He's been like three betting, four betting us. So um, I'd rather just take a flop in position, try to figure out how he plays, uh, try to learn some stuff about him. And, you know, just see, see a flop in position. So basically, um, he is going to check to us. So at this point, 
Um, you know, you don't really, obviously you're not giving him credit for much. Um, I think someone as aggressive as this guy is betting all of his premium hands. So pocket nines plus, or not pocket nines plus, but like, um, let's just say pocket nines, pocket tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace x of spades. He, he's betting all of his flush draws. So all of his good hands he's betting. And I just don't think he, he really has much. He might have something like pocket fours, pocket fives. Um, uh, you know, six, seven of diamonds, like these kind of like weak hands. So, um, I'm going to make a bet that, um, says, I believe that you're weak and I might have a very strong hand. Cause I have, I have, uh, three deuces, three threes in my range. I have nine X, I have flush draws. So, uh, this kind of bet allows him to call with, um, a lot of hands but um, our range is like really, really strong still. Um, and same with this turn bet. Um, when his range is so weak, um, even having these like weak, weak uh, turn bets is still like a, a strong, it still has a very strong range. Um, so I continue. I'm definitely not value betting my deuce. I'm I'm just representing this board in general. Like again, th these kinds of bets can be deuces full. Um, the deuce might be good, but it could be a flush draw. It could be deuces full. It could be nines full. It could be th four threes. Um, so we have all these hands in our range still. And basically, what I decided was um, this guy is never checking a flush draw uh, on the flop. I think it's really likely he has something like pocket fives, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, maybe even eight, nine, something like that. But um, the point is, is that he never has a flush. He never has a full house. And we have a completely uncapped range. Um, we can have uh, three, four, deuce three, pocket deuces, a flush. And um, for that reason, um, we are just going to bet 2x pot. <laughs> so we definitely aren't value betting a deuce in case that wasn't clear. Um, you know, on the flop, we weren't sure if we were good and we were just like betting to, you know, see if he'll fold. But as the as the hand has gone on, um, we simply just have so many strong hands in our range. And we would do this if we had a made hand to try to get insane value. And I, I believe that he uh, also agrees with that, which is why I um, I make this this 2x pot bet. And uh, it's just, even if he has something like king nine, he might have to, I mean, king nine might call here, but probably not. Like he just have to, has to fold so much of his range. And again, we just have a such a wide range of value hands there that um, we can bet. So I think this is our last hand. Um, maybe, maybe not. No, it probably is. So we're raising ace queen and we're gonna get called in the big blind by my key, which we don't know, we don't know anything about him. Um, so he's just like generic 10 and L player. That's, that's our kind of premise going into this, um, going into this hand. So um, we are going to C bet this flop once he checks to us. We bet slightly under pot or half pot, or do we bet half pot? Okay, we bet half pot, which is something we make with all of our hands, like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, uh, pocket jacks. Um, I think aces, kings, queens might make a 2.5 uh, big blind bet to try to like get more action, but we've got plenty of value hands in our range. Again, eights, nines, tens, jacks. Um, even aces, like, are, are fairly likely to make this bet. Um, we have seven X fives. We have all of the value hands in our range. And so what we're targeting right now is something like, well, I mean, we're trying to get a fold. We just want, we just want to take it down with ace high. But um, I believe that um, just based on, you know, this is maybe looking too far into it or like you might think I'm full of crap or something, but based on how long he was taking to call. It just made me feel like he just had like some some big cards. Um, 
or even, I don't know, maybe like threes or something, maybe, maybe a five, but I think he just has a lot of like six, eight, eight, nine, uh, nine, 10, uh, king, queen, king, ten. like, I just think he, king, 10 suited, like these kinds of hands. I don't think he has much, um, just based on how the hand is playing out. Um, so I can't actually remember what I do on the turn here. I think I check back. Maybe I bet. Honestly, don't remember. I think I'm, I think I just check back. So we do check back. And then the river is actually very, very good for us. Um, he absolutely never has a jack, but a lot of his range is things like six, eight, eight, nine, five X, pocket fours, pocket threes. Um, I don't really think those, you know, fours and threes are part of his range too much, but five X is a lot of his range. Um, ace high, um, he ends up having king high. So I kind of feel like, I, I, I wanna make sure I'm not saying that just like in hindsight. But I do feel like he has like king high here. Um, it's just like a it's just like a donkey thing to do is like just call with king high and hope you hit a pair on the turn or river or something. It's just like not that uncommon of a play. Um, so ace high, king high, six four, uh, six eight, eight nine, uh, six nine, five x. Um, these are all hands that we are just beating. And I think get, given our line, um, our line looks kind of weak. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a bet here. I was pretty much planning to call no matter what. Um, and then it, actually when he bet so small, it did feel like a value bet. But then I'm thinking to myself, what hands can he actually value bet so small? Um, the only hands that like he would do this with is like pocket eights and pocket nines, which is such a small, small range. And I'm willing to just pay those off. But as I just mentioned, there's so many hands that we beat um, that I just felt like this was a pretty clear call. Um, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. And we have ace high. So, um, oops. Well, I'll, I'll just bring back my uh, face here. So um, those were the hands I played. Um, those hands took place within about uh, an hour of playing at... 10 and L blitz. So, um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I appreciate all of the subscribers and people who like the videos and still, still watch the videos. Um, I know I haven't been super active. Um, I'd like to get more active again, but I need to, you know, the, the first priority is making sure that I'm playing good poker. Um, I'm, it's hard to offer valuable videos if I'm not playing good poker and, um, I need to make sure that's, that's number one. So that's, you know, that's why I haven't been playing as much or not playing as much, not making many videos. It's like, I haven't been playing great poker. I haven't been able to give you good insight because I haven't been playing hands well. So I just wanted to make sure I'm playing hands well, take some time off and um, come back strong. And that's how I feel, uh, you know, these hands went today. I feel like I played uh, quite well today. So hopefully you guys um, learned some stuff. Uh, drop a like if you made it this far. <laughs> I doubt many people did. But uh, once again, I appreciate all of you and um, have a great weekend.